can't do this to me, Yukimura. You can't make me wait for two months and then leave me on a cliffhanger like this. This is ridiculous. I'm just kidding. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. This was this was a great chapter, man. Oh my god. All right, we are leading into some heavy shit. By the way, the next chapter will be chapter 200. And for a lot of manga, the chapter numbers really aren't that significant, but I remember when uh you when you get to chapter 100 of Vinland Saga, it's a very 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 significant chapter. It's when Thorfinn returns to Iceland and everything. And so, judging by the cliffhanger of this chapter and the potential outcome of next chapter, I can imagine chapter 200 is going to be huge. So let's just hope we actually get it next month. So, all right, let's, let's get into this, man. There's a lot of stuff going on. Actually, it's pretty straightforward, but just it's the, it's the possibility of so many different outcomes that could happen in the next couple of chapters that, that makes this, uh, crazy. Uh, so the first thing that we see when this chapter begins is a couple of the Norsemen are putting up basically the wall, the barrier that Ivyar always talked about, the kind of thing to make their, their town of Arnid into a fortress, more so to protect from any oncoming danger rather than making it into like a stronghold. But it looks like that's what the Norsemen are doing. We also mentioned that this is a, a couple of months later since the big event that happened where Ivyar cut off the hand of uh, the shaman. The shaman's still missing. And nothing bad has happened between the Norsemen and the Lunu at this point. Uh, in fact, there is still some communication going. Thorfinn mentions that they've been searching for the shaman, that he's still uh, talking to Palmuk, that he's still talking to Nisqually, you know, the characters that have formed a real bond with our main characters. So the threat of war is uh, is lingering within everybody, the anxiety of it, but nothing has happened since that time. Like, things are still pretty peaceful, but it's the paranoia within the, the shift of the characters of wondering what could happen and when it could happen. And uh, as we see kind of furthering this chapter, this is potentially all by design. Uh, before that happens, though, we get this great moment between Thorfinn and Einar, and I love these two characters together. I have loved their bond ever since the slave arc. They are probably one of my favorite, like, top friendships. Like, you know how people ship characters? If you ship friendships... I definitely, Thorfinn and Einar are like bros to the end, man. I love their relationship together. And uh, this is the first time where Einar really, really poses the question to Thorfinn that if war happens, what will you do? You know, because the whole idea of us leaving, of us sailing across the ocean, of us going somewhere that's not there, you know, that's kind of been a phrase that's been passed around this entire uh, series is that somewhere that's not here, somewhere that's not as abysmal or horrible or, you know, there is greener pastures out there somewhere. We just have to find it. Well, if you find it, you cultivate it, you live in it, and then it's threatened by danger, threatened by violence, threatened by the very thing that you try to escape from – what do you do at that point? Do you try to find somewhere else? Do you defend yourself? And that is the ultimate, you know, philosophical question of, of Thorfinn and his philosophy and of Vinland Saga in itself. And Thorfinn is kind of taken aback by Einar even asking him that question, which I thought was great because Einar doesn't ask it in, in the guise of like, uh, you know, shifting his viewpoint on Thorfinn. He respects Thorfinn more than anybody else. He's going to follow Thorfinn's lead no matter what. He's asking, he's asking him genuinely as a friend. And I really like that moment because even Einar is thinking, even Einar, who's the guy that's always been anti-war, always been anti, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And, and even he is thinking like, well, what, what, what do we do? And Thorfinn's pretty much, his reply is that it's not going to happen. His reply is basically, we prevent it from happening. We make sure that it doesn't happen. Uh, we're going to find some kind of balance here. We're going to find some kind of limitation. We, we both might need to compromise on both ends, but it's not going to happen. Stopping it before it starts is his plan, is his philosophy. But unfortunately for them, that was also the philosophy of Hild. And the last chapter before this one left with a pretty big cliffhanger as well with her thinking about the two main threats that we have right now are Ivyar and uh, I'm sorry, I always forget the shaman's name. It's really hard for me to remember all of the native names. I'm sorry. That's that's a my bad. But the question is, is Hild actually going to assassinate these characters? Like, is Hild going to be willing to do this? Um, now, the question isn't, can Hild pull it off? Because I think that she can. I think she's got the skills. 
uh, the background. She's been a hunter pretty much all of her life. She knows how to set traps clearly by this chapter. So uh, the idea of hunting down and finding these characters and disposing of them isn't something she wouldn't be able to do. Um, and then you got to wonder, okay, so if IVR just suddenly dies, are they going to think it's the Lunu that did it? I think Hild would go even further just to kind of like make him disappear, you know? Uh, to We would just be questioning where he went as opposed to, of course, that could also lead to uh, theories of like the Lunu kidnapping him and everything. But I think Hild would just like take care of everything, man. Like she, she'd make sure that shit was never found. You know what I mean? I don't honestly put it past her to be able to do it and to want to do it. I really don't. Uh, and that's not anything against Hild. I think that you just have something to protect. You know, you've built, you've put so much blood, sweat, and tears in order to make our, the village of Arnid happen, to make Vinland happen. You're not going to see it let go by just two assholes, you know? So I, I can understand her point of view and uh, her willingness to do it, especially understanding that Thorfinn would never do it. Nobody else would ever do it. Also, not wanting to subject anybody else to doing it and doing it covertly kind of like taking matters into her own hands, putting the world on her shoulders, that kind of thing. So it makes sense to me uh, as a character for, for Hill to want to do that. Now where things are going to get spicy comes with what happens in the final third of this chapter. And we are with uh, Ivyar and his two bros, Stark. I don't know if you pronounce it Stark. Somebody correct me with the pronunciation, but that's the guy that always wears the helmet, that always has the mask on. We haven't really got a clear view of his face yet. Um, Stark is probably going to be actually the main antagonist of this arc, I think, when all is said and done, if there is an antagonist of this arc, based upon this chapter. Because if you think about it, ever since the very beginning of this arc, when we first met these characters, Ivyar has always been very honest about his views. I don't think there's anything... I, I say there's nothing malicious with what Ivyar is doing because I think he does have some sound logic behind what he's saying, although his problem is his unwillingness to compromise and his lack of experience when it comes to dangerous things in war and violence. So he doesn't understand the serious repercussions of particular aspects of it, so he's a little bit too gung-ho about it, but that is the culture at the time, so you can't really blame him, and he makes solid points. Uh, but he puts his heart in the line and he says what he actually thinks. He's just a very straightforward guy. This is just what he views and this is what he thinks is the best way to handle the situation. Stark, on the other hand, he, this guy is a smooth talker. This guy rolls like a nat 20 when it comes to uh, charisma and deception because he has been kind of pulling the strings ever since the really beginning, that's the, if you think about it, because he's the one that uh, talked to uh, Cordelia and was able to keep her silent, at least for quite some time, about them having a sword. Whereas Ivyar is the kind of the guy that just puts his heart on his sleeve and just said, says whatever's on his mind. He has outbursts at particular times. Like, he's not subtle about things. Whereas Stark is kind of the guy that, it may be symbolized by him wearing the mask, right? Wearing the helmet, because what you see on the outside isn't necessarily what is actually on the inside. Whereas Ivyar is just out there, uh, you know, Stark is a little bit more behind the scenes, kind of making things happen, manipulating things subtly to whatever he sees as the best possible option. So even if him and Ivyar have the same end goal, they go about it in very different ways. And if they're brothers, I think that that is also, you know, that that's a great storytelling motif is because they wouldn't be exactly the same. They'd probably be a little bit opposite so that they can um, complement each other on that. He uh, hits the, the rope and then it pulls him up and so he's hanging upside down from the tree and Ivyar obviously thinks it's the Lanu because he thinks that they're going to uh, fight against them and cause some kind of war. And uh, Stark is like, no, this is one of Hild's traps. So it's like, you can tell this was done this way. Like, he knows. Like, he just knows all of a sudden. He's not going by paranoia. He's going by logic, which might be a little bit also uh, the differences between the characters. And so, you know, he knows just by logic that this is one of Hild's traps. Seen it before. The Lunu doesn't do stuff like this. They don't tie their ropes this way. Uh, so he knows exactly what's going on. And he says, the Lunu want peace anyways, which he just kind of says, just a quick slip of the tongue, where Ivyar is like, wait, I thought you you agreed that like there's going to be a war here that happens. And Stark's like, listen, like that's never going to happen, all right? And, like they obviously want peace. I can tell by the situation that one, the shaman is just a one-off. He doesn't mention anything about the shaman, but that's what he would think. Uh, and he's like, we need to have actual power here. We need to actually have a leader that's worth it. And why can't it be you? And this also leads me to think that Stark is the kind of guy that, like, would put 
Ivyar in the leadership position. So say they managed to convince everybody against Thorfinn, right? And they went to Ivyar to be, they wanted Ivyar to be their new leader. I think Stark would let that happen because I don't think Stark is power hungry in the sense that he wants to be the leader, but he would be the guy manipulating things behind the scenes for the leader. So like, it, it's kind of like Ivyar would be the face of uh of the leadership where really stark would be the one coming up with all the ideas making sure they happen talking to the right people but nobody would ever really know and uh you know now that i'm thinking more about the mask element i think that that's just i don't know it's just a really i, I might be too on the nose but i think it's a, a nice little creative way to kind of showcase who his character is um, he's also incredibly intelligent because what happens next is uh the next trap he actually falls into and he looks at ivr and he just immediately knows what's going on He's like, you have to get out of here because Hild is coming to kill you, bro. He knows the traps are by Hild. He don't, he understands what kind of traps they are, and he understands how Hild would think within this moment. Even not being that close to Hild, knowing that she's close to Thorfinn, knowing that uh, the way that she created these traps, Hild's coming to kill you. Get out of here. And that's how the chapter ends. That's the cliffhanger. What the hell? Great cliffhanger, by the way. So... We're going to have Ivyar on the run here. I don't know if he's going to try to help uh, his two friends out of their traps before he goes. He might and he might not. I'm really, I, I really think it's a 50-50 shot with him because I don't think he's the kind of guy that would just screw over somebody, especially somebody close to him. But if his life is in danger and Stark, who is obviously more intelligent than him, is telling him to run, he might run. So I, I don't know. That could go either way. But here's where things are going to get crazy if the next chapter goes in this direction, because Thorfinn was tipped off by Carly, who overheard uh, Hild talking. Perhaps that's just a narrative little... Uh, might be too convenient, but I think it's going to pay off. Um, so, we have a... Dude, this is what could happen. We have Ivyar running. We have Ivyar running into Hild. We have Hild trying to kill Ivyar. If we have Thorfinn show up and try to stop Hild from doing this... This could be crazy because th this is literally, literally right after Hild has forgiven Thorfinn for everything. They, we had that moment. Thorfinn cried in her arms. It was this. It was a big character shift. It was the best chapter in the best chapter in Vinland Saga, chapter one ninety one. It's probably the only chapter I know the number of off the top of my head because it's that good. And now, after everything is resolved and everything is settled between Thorfinn and Hild, we might actually be getting a Thorfinn and Hild combat situation again. Which is so sad. It's <laughs> so tragic. They just, like, solved everything. Like, she just forgave him for all of these years, for killing her father, for everything. And we might have this confrontation. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go down. I don't see Hild like, fighting to kill, I obviously, I mean, uh, against Thorfinn, so say they did get into a combat situation, they both wouldn't be trying to kill each other, obviously, they would just be trying to subdue each other, but if Hild truly believes this is right, if Evyar tries to attack Hild, because uh, he has a sword, he has the sword on him, so if Evyar tries to attack Hild, obviously Thorfinn is going to defend her, uh, so we might be in a situation where Thorfinn is tested to the limit to see, like, if he's willing to combat his friend, if he's willing to fight off, uh, Ivyar. If he does, Ivyar is going to discover for the first time that Thorfinn is actually skilled, that Thorfinn actually has a past, uh, which is going to be crazy because, don't forget, just because Thorfinn dodged a, uh, a little axe swing from an elderly native doesn't necessarily mean everyone understands what Thorfinn can do and what, where he's come from. So, yeah, so Ivyar might discover things about Thorfinn. Thorfinn might combat Hild. Hild might uh, inadvertently wind up killing one of the other two. Um, I don't know, man. Th this is crazy. This is crazy. Not to mention this entire time, the shaman is still missing. He's gone. He's probably watching from the shadows somewhere. He knows these woods better than Hild. I think Hild can navigate the woods pretty well, but you know, it's not like she lived her, her whole life like he has. Woo! Okay, so... It's, uh, dude, it's gonna get wild, man. I don't know how many chapters we have left of Vinland Saga. To me, it, just reading this narratively, I feel like this is only reaching, like, the middle point of the arc, if that. But according to a lot of Yukimura's tweets, it, it seems to imply that Vinland Saga is very close to ending. Like, maybe within the next, like, 20 chapters, which is crazy. It doesn't feel like that's enough time, but, 
Uh, we'll see how it shakes out, man. I think chapter 200 is going to be a big one. I think it's going to be very significant. I think like chapter 100, it's going to be very significant, but perhaps in the opposite way where chapter 100 was significant in that it was a very happy resolution style chapter, 200 will probably fuck up everything. So uh, I guess that's it. Let me know what you guys think about chapter 199 down below. I love this chapter. Uh, I love this arc. Um, I love this manga. This is great. This is great shit, man. So let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, please like the video and comment if you enjoyed it to help it in the algorithm. Also, if you check the links in the description below, I have a Patreon, channel memberships, merch store, Discord, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Twitter and Instagram is where you can follow me that I post the most on. Uh, other than that, guys, I love you. I'll talk to you next time.